and today I'm going to talk about Mary's room it's a classic thought experiment and the take of a neuroscientist on what would happen with Mary's room just to refresh your memory in case you don't remember what Mary's room is picture this it's a thought experiment it's a Gedanken and it was devised by Frank Jackson here it is Mary is a brilliant scientist who is, for whatever reason, forced to investigate the world from a black and white room via a black and white television monitor. She specializes in neurophysiology, the neurophysiology of vision, and acquires, let's suppose, all the physical information there is to obtain about what goes on when we see ripe tomatoes or the sky and use terms like red, blue, and so on. Now remember though, she has never seen the colors herself, but she does know all of this. She discovers, for example, just which wavelength combination from the sky stimulates the retina and exactly how this this produces via the central nervous system the contraction of the vocal cords and the expulsion of the air from the lungs that results in the utterance of the sentence the sky is blue. Jackson asked what would happen when Mary was released from her black and white room or say was given a color TV set would she learn anything new when she began to see colors or not? One of the most intriguing resolutions for Mary's room comes from V.S. Ramachandra, who is a neuroscientist and a colleague of his named Edward Hubbard. Now, uh, Ramachandran and his colleagues said there were three possible resolutions or three things that Mary might see when color entered her field of vision for the first time. She might look at the apple and it might be gray and in other words she couldn't see the apple and that'd be the end of the story as as red. I mean she just wouldn't be able to comprehend the color red. She wouldn't be able to tell it was red. Or she might just see the color red. She might say, wow, you know, um, because she's never seen color before. And the third option is the one they think is probably the most viable option and is certainly the most intriguing. They have worked with a colorblind synesthete who was a volunteer. Now, a synesthete, in case you don't remember what synesthesia is, it's a kind of a mixture of the senses. A synesthete is someone who may see colors when he hears music or um, taste flavors when he sees a color. So in other words, the senses are mixed up. And what they found when they worked with this synesthete was something that they felt was very much the way Mary would see the world. Here's the way they phrased it. A colorblind synesthete volunteer cannot see certain hues because of deficient color receptors. However, when he looks at numbers, his synesthesia enables him to experience colors in his mind that he has never seen in the real world. He calls these Martian colors. The fact that color cells and corresponding colors can activate in his brain helps us answer the philosophical question. We suggest that the same thing will happen to Mary. That seems to me a very fascinating resolution for Mary's room. A lot of philosophers have offered resolutions including Daniel Dennett and the divisor Frank Jackson himself, but I find this by far the most intriguing. So. What do you guys think? Um, do you think it would be resolved as Ram Ramachandra says it would? Do you think that the resolution for Mary's room is something else? Um, 
there is a complete account of what mary's room is and a source for ramachandra and hubbard's resolution of mary's room in the low bar as usual you guys take care talk to you later by